Yeah, well, now I'm hitting start recording, so now people are just going to be confused with why we're laughing. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey, and I'm 100% awake, and I'm here with Zedrot. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-being and time and effort into watching every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to us in English. Um, starting with our big series being Gintama and our side series being Kuroko's Basketball, which we are now full steam ahead trying to finish as today, but that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, Kuroko episodes 31 to 37. There is so much going on with these basketball boys that we are just gonna start right away to start talking about it uh because last time we left off on a cliffhanger so let's continue on so episode um 31 i surpassed it long ago go ahead zen tell us what it's about episode 31 we're still playing against uh midorima mm-hmm. and the shutoku gang uh, Kuroko rejoins after he gets benched earlier because he can't get around the hawk's eye. He comes back in and he busts out the secret weapon, which is the vanishing drive, and he uses it to get past Midorima, who is uh, the second best defender among the generation of miracles, so it's like a big deal. Uh, they start scoring like crazy again because of Kuroko's new drive makes them much harder to defend. We get into the like the last quarter, the climax quarter of the game, uh, and Kagami and Midorima are kind of trading points back and forth. And then we are like right neck and neck. Um, Shutoku is leading by one point. Kuroko busts out the vanishing drive again, and it defeats the Hawkeye. So it actually beats the, uh, the guy who was hard countering him before. And he sends the ball over to uh, Kyoshi Tepe, but he is, like, his legs are hurting because, you know, he sells that that lingering leg injury. Um, And so his attempt to score and win them the game is blocked. However, uh, Midorima, who blocks it, uh, fouls him. So they get free throws. He lands one, and he misses the other. Kagami jumps up and grabs the rebound and goes to try to dunk it in right at the last second in order to win the game, or else they'll end up in overtime which they don't want to do because Tepe is hurting and everyone is tired. Yep. Um, this is the the end of this one. This one ended up uh, really well. I think in this one they start talking about how um, there's just a really good game of basketball going on right now. And so much so that the other players who are like first years who are just watching it, they kind of actually don't want it to end. They want to just kind of keep it going because the way that it's currently going is just like so back and forth, uh, so back and forth going. Uh, it's like the 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 scores are so close; they're both trying their absolute best. Um, it's like everything you would want out of a perfect game, basically, where both sides are literally neck and neck at each other and going for it, and it's exciting the whole way through. Um, I also really liked it when they started talking. Midorima at some point is asked, like, I know you know your limit, so how close are you to the limit to how many more of those three throws can you make? And then he says, like, uh, he's like, yeah, fool, I surpassed that limit a long time ago. <laughs> I was supposed to be out of the three throws so long ago, and I'm just still making them in somehow. <laughs> Uh, which was a, a great way of showing just how serious that the game is going and the the crazy back and forth. I also like the the bit at the end of Tepe, uh, where he starts to get a little funky with his legs, and that that will play into the next kind of arc stuff. But it was a good kind of indication of showing it now. So yeah, it was a really good. And I'll, I'll, of course, this also ends on a cliffhanger. So <laughs> where the game, the game result as is, is tradition, as is tradition, with the the game result being in the next episode. But for this one, it was really good. I thought it was a good uh, end to this to this uh, to this match that they were having. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it's good. The whole game is really good. It's kind of it's weird to start an episode right in the middle of like a stressful moment. But, uh, this will never happen again, I swear. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was really good. Um, I think the vanishing drive is super cool. Uh, anytime yes. Kuroko gets like a power up, I think it's pretty sick. So, yeah, it's true. Um, K- 
Kuroko is the only person that I can think of that can make passing look sick. Yeah, so... like the most like <laughs> generic thing ever. Yeah, it, it, extremely cool. Yeah, it it helps that he just like fucking slaps the shit out of that ball every single time that he does it. And for the vanishing drive, they also do a very good job to make it seem like he. It's like kind of like um, you know how in samurai movies where the samurai does the sword hit and then they're suddenly behind them and then they go what and then they get a slash and they die. That's kind of it <laughs> with the vanishing yeah. drive. It's exactly like that, actually. It is exactly like that, and it's cool every single time, and nobody knows how it's done. I'm still not 100% sure how he does it, and that kind of goes into the next one, but either way, it's really cool to see. Um, and yeah, real good episode. Let's move on to the next one, which is called Give Up, which is episode 32. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, the game... They do not score, essentially. Um, yeah, maybe we're almost because, Yeah, so because the uh, tournament is big, they say, you know what, we're not doing overtime in this tournament, actually. Um, so it's just a tie. So they just end with a tie. Um, the the douchey team, the one that um, injured De- Tepe, Tepe last time. What? No, I was saying, yeah, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah. Oh, oh, I couldn't hear what you were saying. <laughs> it just sounded like you were trying to speak and I kept talking over you. No, no, no. Um, the, uh, the the jerk team, I don't remember their name. D- uh, um, Daichi's team is what I call them. Assholes. Daichi. Unbelievable yeah. pieces yeah, they, of the shit. The asshole team. You, everyone knows what I... If they know Kuroko, they know what I mean when I yes. say Yes. In uh, Like a Dragon, there's a part where you fight uh, dudes on the street and when their name pops up to say, what are you fighting? It just says assholes. This is them. Uh, that's this. Yeah. That's these guys. Um, they win their game, but everyone's obviously like, oh, they were they were cheating, they were sneaking, because um, they're just jerks, because they're the asshole team. Um, Huga and Tepe are arguing, um, and then we find out that this is the last year that uh, Tepe can compete. So it's kind of like, it, it's, it's your, the, the standard sports manga I want to get the trophy before I have to retire, you know, I'm yeah. a week up from retirement. Yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> Except for this one is at least a little bit heavy because he's not graduating. It's it's for a, a longer standing medical condition. <laughs> yes, yes. But still, it's the same um, thing in theory. Yeah. And then um, we get some nice kind of lore about the creation of the Saren basketball team. Yeah, and that's where, because um, Kagami ends up talking to him and say like hey what's going on with that and he says like well let me tell you and we get this a flashback to how they started up the Asarian basketball club which we'll go into more in the in the next episode i think the next episode is like a full one this kind of just goes into it yeah this, this one you just i think they this just shows him how he looked like back then and he had like blonde hair <laughs> He was trying to i think actually this might be the start of the other one but so i'll save it for that one but for this one, um, I thought it was pretty good. It did a good job of establishing that Daichi's team is a complete garbage team full of trash people and trash yeah, I like humans. how they can be like so obviously like evil, but all the adults in this world are like, let them play. It's crazy because... They're uh, crippling other children, let them play. Yeah, let them play. It's so funny because if you go to the Crunchyroll comments on uh, Kuroko, it shows you the top comments from when it debuted years ago. And it's a lot of people, as time goes on and more of this, like I was checking the comments for them, it's a lot of people going like, if this arc doesn't end with them getting some kind of punishment for their misdeeds, I'm going to be so <laughs> angry. It's... <laughs> It, every single time these dudes shows up, it's like a time capsule of people being unbelievably pissed <laughs> at this team. Um, but I thought it was a good way of kind of showing off like a game that was amazing from both sides, where both players basically did the thing where they're just like so sick with it and they're so good, and it's like, yeah, this is basketball. And then the same t- at the same time, there's another team doing the exact same thing. And is like being the most shittiest people imaginable to win. So it's a good kind of like back and forth between like the different ideologies that are going to kind of be at play for the next one. 
And yeah, it was interesting to hear more about uh, Tepe. I really like Tepe a whole bunch. After this specific arc, I, he's definitely w- one of my top favorites now. <laughs> Just something about I'm, I love him. He he is he's amazing. I, I absolutely love him. Um, and yeah, I thought it was a good setup for the next one. It got a good intrigue going on. I've also realized that <laughs> probably because of the nature of the anime, a lot of the first four minutes of Koriko is actually explaining the last <laughs> the last episode. So in theory, you only really have nineteen minutes of Koriko. <laughs> Yep, and when you take out the four minute intro and the the, what, the one minute and fifty minute song, uh, there's not a lot to go through it. But uh, this episode, I thought, did a good job setting up for the next one and kind of going into the backstory about what's going on with Tepe. And we haven't brought it up, but the OP and the ED are really good. I forgot to bring yeah, it up last Kuroko episode. Has amazing music. Yes, it's this so good. This OP that they have for this one is absolutely amazing. Um, it might just be because in the middle of it, it looks like there's, especially with one of the, um, uh, one of, gen- one of the Generation of Miracles has a storm, a purple storm when he shows up. <laughs> so it looks like some kind of, like, a summon of some kind, like a demonic summon. And then they show, um, all the others and they're going, like, fucking crazy and they're going with it. There's, like, so much crazy detail and animation in it that it's just super well. But then also the song goes really good with it as well. It's just, it's just like, hitting on all cylinders for it. I just feel like bringing it up because I forgot to bring it up last time. I just want to bring it up I here. Forget, I forget which numbered OP that it is. Because I don't remember the song names. I only, I, I only know them I by think, the numbers. I think it's three. Is it the third one? Because, the third one, right? yeah, because the first the one... Self? Yeah, the yeah. other this one this one would be the other self. The way I remember it is that it goes the first one, which sounds very similar to the third one, and then let's fight now, which is the second one. <laughs> That's how I remember the second OP is that it was a drastic difference in the beginning of it. Oh yeah, because the second was Rimfire. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Rimfire. So yeah, yeah this is, is my favorite one personally. Yeah, it goes really hard. It does. It goes really good, and it also goes very well with a lot of the montages that we're about to see. <laughs> Um, real good job, and the ED is good as well. I just wanted to bring it up here. As, and uh, uh, there, there is actually a lore reason as to why there is a whirlwind around him in the opening. Is there? Is he gonna yes. show up with a with a Darude sandstorm in the middle of the game? <laughs> <laughs> well, every everyone has like their special, you know, all their different moves and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and his is called Thor's hammer, and it's a big <laughs> uh, spinning dunk that he does. And when he spins, it's it's illustrated by like a whirlwind around his body. That's hilarious. Okay, so that's, that's good. Like, yeah, that's like a reveal of his uh, one of his special moves. Yeah, I, w- I was wondering why is he doing? He looks so crazy demonic when he's doing it. Like if I was playing basketball against this guy and he did that to me, I would just give up. Which is what a vast majority of the characters well, do in Kuroko. <laughs> <laughs> As we talk about it in the upcoming episode, it turns out a lot of people do it. Like, I don't blame them. Like, if I was going... Like, I, it's hard enough to go against these teams when it's just like, oh yeah, Midorima's team, and they're kind of based around him. Uh, Almine's team. Almine's kind of a fucker to go against. But And then there's his team as well. But then uh, trying to imagine... And Koriko, obviously. and But trying to imagine a team with all of them on it, there's just no way to win. <laughs> there's just, like, no conceivable way that I could imagine anyone standing a chance. And to be fair, they have been saying that for a while. And you kind of get more of the backstory of, like, how it actually feels to go against them from people who are like, oh yeah, we lost to them. And man... That really sucked. <laughs> that really killed all drive that I had for it. Um, so, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in the next one. But yeah, well, yeah this, it's like hopeless, man. <laughs> He's like huge. It's insane. It would what be what it would be what I would imagine how it would feel like if I just said, "Hey, Daigo, do you want to go to best of five? Like, if I went up to Daigo and just said, "Like, pick a game," and then he just started dunking on me for the vast majority of it, and he's just like not paying attention to me. <laughs> That's how I assume it would feel like if you just went against them. But then take that and then actually say, "Like, actually, no, this is one of the games that I love the most, and I've spent the most time with it. Let's play." And then he beats me without even trying all that hard. That's how it would feel like to lose to the Generation of Miracles. <laughs> it's a it's a never ending assault on it all. Um, but yeah, how do you feel about Give Up before we move on to the next one? Because I forgot to actually ask you. 
a <laughs> uh, really good episode. I I like the next one more because I really like the um, the founding of the club stuff. Uh, I really like Tepe. I actually really like um, Huga as well. He's not like as as up there, obviously, as like Generation of Miracles people in the in the popularity stuff. But I actually mm-hmm. really like him. So let's get some good stuff here. Yeah, the the upcoming stuff really helped a lot of. I actually really like this upcoming arc because it actually goes into a lot of the other members that are not, who are not the main two, on the team yeah. that make it feel like they are the <laughs> ones that win. So uh, it's I, funny because people people call Kuroko like very similar to JoJo in that every character just looks like a normal guy unless you're really important and then you have like crazy colored hair and everyone else looks normal <laughs> um it's funny because there's so many jojo voice actors that, that work on this show too it is very similar to that it is 100 percent just like that <laughs> so let's move on to the next episode which is episode 33 we're the Saren high school basketball team go ahead zen so uh Everyone's kind of we're we're in flashback land right now, mm-hmm. um, and Hugo's thinking about whether or not he really wants to play basketball at all because he has he's given up because the generation of miracles is is crazy and there's no point basically um, because he feels like they'll never amount to anything with that team out there. Um, Kyoshi disagrees vehemently, and they end up going up onto the roof with like the the other recruits and doing the whole the thing they did at the beginning of the series where they made everyone go up and like yell their their oaths off off the roof of the school mm-hmm. um huga appears and says that he wants to join the team and he's it got his regular hair now he doesn't have like the blonde delinquent haircut anymore mm-hmm. he's um back to his normal look uh kiyoshi makes him the team captain and they play and win uh kiyoshi wins the game for them but huga misses a shot and he's very like sad about it later on uh, i don't remember if this is the episode where they go into training him but i i hope that we that they do soon i forget actually if they do this or not um but then we are in the uh finals and the Taiko team is there like the finals of the the tournament Taiko being the team that is the generation of miracles in middle school mm-hmm. uh, and there's like a neat little moment where kuroko walks past them all so it's like oh you know they're gonna be teammates in the future that's cute yeah they also Um, don't notice him (laughs) because that was the other funny part is like they get the the five characters oh man they have so much aura and then he's just like in the behind them (laughs) yeah not with zero aura at all zero um they are going up against the douche team who has another uncrowned king who is the biggest douche (laughs) the douche king of them all Mm -hmm. um Kiyoshi ends up getting hurt. He tries to push through it, uh, and he ends up getting a sprain because the douche guy is like knock his leg over and over again until he gets hurt. And uh, everyone's like, "We know you did it," but they can't prove it. Um, they do actually win the game, but it doesn't matter because with Kiyoshi gone, he's like their playmaker because this is pre Kagami era, mm-hmm. um, and they they get eliminated afterward because they're not able to keep up without him. And then they have a very emotional moment where they're in like a hospital room, and Hugo's looking out the window, and Tepe's like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back, and but I, I can't play anymore after next year because my leg is so fucked now from that douche guy that if I keep going too hard on it, I could, I could permanently like damage it, and I wouldn't be able to to keep using it. Yeah, um, the, the basic idea is that he needs to do surgery, but if he does the surgery, he's just out of being able to play basketball, but he can probably do it for another year. If he heals without doing the surgery for a year, he can likely continue playing it, but he will just continue to de- 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 degrade his legs, and then it'll be bad either way. It's like, the, But that's the only way he'd be able to be able to play, is that he would have to rest for a year, come back, and... Um, and then be able to play for that bit there if he didn't want to do the surgery. Which seems like he just is trying to delay the surgery so he can actually have a chance at uh, winning into the Winter Cup. That's very very sad. Uh, yeah. This guy sucks. And then uh, we, we're back into the future now. And we're about to play the douche team. That's the, the next team that we're going we're gonna to fight is the douche team. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, start with this one. We did forget some of the other stuff to mention, so I'll just bring it up just because it all kind of blended into feeling like this one episode. It's really weirdly structured where we got like the beginning of the <laughs> we got the beginning of it in the previous episode and it ends here. Um, I really like seeing Hugo with his blonde hair, uh, where he was yeah, trying to go it's through. It's really funny when he has the, <laughs> the blonde hair. He's trying to go through his delinquent the, the arm. Delinquent hair, yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. There's a part in here that made me so confused. I was going to ask you if you've ever seen this. There's a part where he goes inside the arcade and he's playing a fighting game and he plays it with the stick on the not on the palm of his hand, but on the backhand of his hand. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, like he's got the stick between his fingers, but his hand is is down. Yeah, his hand is like backwards to the. I could actually probably just show you it. I actually have a. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm having trouble visualizing. But I've me, seen a lot of fight stick holding techniques, but I'm having trouble visualizing. Wait, right, one talking moment. About. Hold up, because I have a fight stick right here that I can just pick up and show to Zen to show you. I'll send him a picture. You guys won't be able to see this because I refuse to uh, uh, show you my hand stuff. Also because, holy shit, this fight stick is dusty. Um, <laughs> it's too much dust here. Uh, I've kicked up so much dust. Alright, I'm going to show you. This is how he was holding it. And I was going to ask you, have you ever seen anyone hold a fight stick like this? Because I had not uh, hold up. Because now I have to figure out how the fuck Discord works now. Uh, disc on. There we go. Okay. Uh, camera. Discord, can you not be terrible right now? I'm asking you for asking for a friend. There we go. He was holding it like that. Yeah, that's how most people do it. Really? That's wine glass. Yeah. Really, I had never seen that before. Yeah. Why so did... you do it that way because if you hold it with your palm, uh huh, you have to move your whole arm. Yeah, uh, to move it. But if you do it like that with your fingers, like around what would be the, like the stem of the wine glass. That's why they call it wine glass. Yeah, yeah. Um, you do it with your wrist instead, so it's shorter movement. Oh wow, maybe that's something to practice. I never. I yeah, of when... all the of all the arcade games that I play, I always play it with the full on like, G -G -G, like gear shift style. You grip around the ball of the thing. Yep, yep, yep. I, that's how I played uh, Marvel vs. Capcom in the original, and Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in the original arcade. Okay, so, uh, obviously I haven't been there in a long time, but back when I was in like the competitive scene, most people held it that way. Really? Uh, but then there's another way that some people do it, which is like to the side. So like you'll have the stem between two of your fingers, but your like, pointer finger and your middle finger will be on the side of the ball, and you'll move it that way. Um, but nobody like grips the ball. That's crazy. I I always gripped it. But to be fair, I didn't have any fighting game players that were experts around me to be like, hey, yo, this is how you do it. So I just had to do it by which way it felt the most natural to me, which was doing it that way. Um, really made a lot of those uh, Marvel vs. Capcom stuff, though. If, this was, if there was an easier way to do it, I would have gladly learned how to do it, because those inputs are not easy <laughs> to, to learn and to do. Uh, but I also think I was playing, like, easy characters. I was, like, playing Zangief. I don't really need to know that. I just need to know Quarter Circle <laughs> and Grab. <laughs> there wasn't, like, a whole lot of, like, that much thought put into it. Anyway, it was interesting to see him hold it like that. Uh, also that he was losing and that he said, like, I hate losing, which is maybe the most number one fighting game thing that I've ever heard anyone yes. say. <laughs> Everyone, everyone that plays fighting games loves fighting games and really fucking hates losing at fighting games. It is. Uh, in it's theory. so frustrating. It is. So it was really funny to see him just get mauled in the arcades going, God damn it, I hate losing. <laughs> it's funny too because there's two, there's two kinds of games that, that do that to me. It's fighting games and it's uh, card games. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like. I hate losing these. It was so much. Oh my god! Uh, I got like, a master duel back today, and I I lost one game, and I was like, I'm done for a bit. That's so funny. So funny enough, me and my brother, um, we were, we started an alt account on the Switch so I could get access to the code to do the new player thing because I did not uh, count for the returning player because I was over 30 days. Um, and in there, we were doing us. He was like, Can you? tell me to pilot sword soul as someone who has never played it so that you can actually do it so i didn't have to take the controller for myself and he just did it i was like yeah i'm pretty sure i could we won the first game um beating it and then the second one we entered a um 
a sword soul mirror match and we were I, I had basically like figured out a way to get him out done the dude that we were playing was doing much better we were playing with like stupid handicaps on ourselves so we only had one she Shao and one of the big 10 monster and that was it we did not make baron we did not get any of the other ones that would have been very useful to us but we got to the point where I was like, okay, we can easily beat this. We just need to summon the token. We have the trap card face down. And we can win this way because now he's hard locked. He can't play another card because if he does, he's just going to instantly die to this. Um, so we go for the attack and we go, okay, he was literally drawing one card. He drew the card and they were like, all right, you're just going to wait for him to play the second card. He entered battle phase. And then I said, wait a minute. He didn't play a second card. <laughs> and he attacked the token that my brother left in attack mode because my brother assumed that we were going to use it for a synchro summon. And he attacked us for game. <laughs> if he never played a second card, we couldn't activate the trap card and we were just like sitting ducks to, to the attack. And it ended up me arguing because I was like, why'd you leave it in attack mode? I was like, what kind of idiot just synchro summons and then doesn't do it? I didn't know what I was doing. You were supposed to be piling behind us. So we had like an argument for like five minutes of saying like, God damn it, we had that one. We were, I was so angry that we lost that game because I was like, we won that. But it was uh, an unfortunate uh, sidestep in my my inability to communicate to my brother to do this that we lost, and it was infuriating. So I 100% understand what it's like that you take like one loss, and then you're just like, God damn it. Yeah, this sucks. Like, I need a break. I need yeah, a break. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Before I rage out. Yep, and that is 100% what Hugo is all about, because he's just uh, constantly angry at losing. <laughs> Which, to be fair, after dealing with the Generation of Miracles, it's like that. But I also liked hearing a lot more about, like, from their from their perspective of what it's like to actually go against them. And um, the uh, sports team manager, which uh, Rico was going to be on their side when they originally asked her, she said, I'm not really interested, especially basketball, because of what happened with the Generation of Miracles. I'm not angry at them. I'm angry that no one else seems to think that they can win. So, what's the point of training a team that isn't even sure that they can actually win themselves? Like, nobody's trying to fight for first place. They're all trying to fight to be like, hey, we made it, and that's it. And that's kind of infuriating to me. And it kind of shows back that because they're friends with Hugo, that's exactly what happened to him, is that he's kind of fed up with the idea of, like, losing and not being able to win anything because he's tried so hard and it's just completely all failed around him. Uh... And yeah, going back to Tepe, it was really cool because when they were doing their declaration, I didn't even realize this, but Hugo brings it up to him when he's in the hospital. He's like, um, I noticed that when you were, when everyone was making their declaration, you were the only one who said that we're not going to be the number one team. You said that we're going to make it to the finals of the, of the Winter Cup. You didn't actually think that we were going to be the number one best in the world. So you're, you yourself are still holding on to the defeat from the generation of miracles and you're still scared of actually losing and you don't think that it's actually possible to be number one but it's okay because i'm gonna figure out a way and we're gonna do it and we're gonna be the number one team and you're gonna see it for yourself i thought it was really cool it was like a good mindset of seeing it because especially because tepe at the beginning was like i want you to join i want this i want that and then you see that he's actually dealing with a lot of the same things that he's doing it but he's putting up more of a brave front about it as opposed to Hugo, who's having a more of, like, a actual anger-inducing, like, this sucks so much kind of attitude about it. Um, it was, like, a good two ways of showing the side effects of going against a generation of miracles. One of the people who are just actually pissed and wanting to still be number one, and then the side of him, which is someone who is a little bit more calm, but is also defeated on the inside, where they're like, I don't actually think it's possible to beat them, but I still want to play and do all that. And it's a good kind of like back and forth difference between the two. Um, and you understand a little bit more why Hugo's the actual team captain, even though Tepe is the better player. Uh, and yeah, just in general, a lot of this backstory was just cool. Seeing how the they started up about how they had a basketball team. with They, had, they went from no basketball team to having a basketball team. <laughs> Uh, the way that the, the ritual started of them screaming from the rooftop saying that they're going to be number one uh, is really good. The way Rico was able to join, it was all good. Because they also talk about like she was so good that everyone was trying to, uh, to basically court her to join their team. She just didn't have an idea of where she wanted to go at that moment. Um, and also kind of seeing a lot of like 
Hugo starts to get a little bit um, warmer towards Tepe because in the beginning he's like, I hate you, but we're going to do this. And there's like a moment where it looks like they could have gone for a high five and then he holds it back and that comes back a little bit later, uh, which is really funny because it reminded me of Slam Dunk. In Slam Dunk, they do something very similar to this, where two characters absolutely hate them, hate each other. It's not like this situation exactly, because in this situation, Tepe doesn't really have a problem with Hyuga. But in the in Slam Dunk, it's two characters that can absolutely absolutely hate each other. They can't stand each other at all. And there's a moment where they're finally working together, and they do the sickest high five that you could imagine in manga history. It's like a full on two page spread dedicated to this high five. <laughs> And it reminded me of that. Um, and yeah, it was a really good episode. I really liked it. How about, how do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it's really good. I like a lot of the the stuff around the Generation of Miracles and like their impact on the game because that that's just the subplot. That's like Kuroko's subplot, and that's the one that I like more. I'm not as interested in Kagami's uh, in comparison. Um, uh, Kagami is, which it, is, I'm going to be strong. I want to be the best. I have issues with my brother. I don't have, my parents aren't around. That kind of stuff. Is that even a, really a thing? For, I guess I haven't gone that he, far he, yet. I guess, I guess, have we been to his house yet? No, when the the episodes that we end up here, he goes back to America. That's yeah, where it ends his, up, so his, I haven't seen he, his home When he's all. in Japan, he lives alone. Oh, okay. um, His family's in America, yeah. Okay, that's that, that's very interesting to hear. At least that the, the, I I never actually thought about it. I didn't know that he's just like chilling alone in Japan. But I also know that's a thing in Japan. At least based off of the many manga and animes that I've watched. I, I, I feel like it's got to be a manga thing. But do you think? Okay, if you're someone from Japan, please let us know because it seems like in Japan, at 16, you can start living by yourself, which just sounds crazy. Right? <laughs> how? How? <laughs> how can you afford to live by yourself at 16? It makes no sense. At over here, you can't even get a place until you're like maybe 20 something <laughs> because of the credit stuff, the way it works. So, I'm actually kind of curious to see if any of that is real. How much of that is just like for drama's sake, you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know, man. It's, it's very weird. It is, it is very weird. I will agree with you on that. Uh, but that was that episode, and let's get on to the real game. Um, episode 34, I Will Defeat You. Episode 34... Oh, fuck me. Okay, there we go. So, we're kicking off the game with uh, Daichi Douchebag High School. Mm-hmm. Uh... We take the offensive early, Kuroko and Kyoshi start landing some points, and then immediately, Douchebag High School starts doing shenanigans. They start, like, uh... Rough plan. Yeah, they're, like, getting physical and pushing, and they're, they're like, they have a trick to exploit the blind spot of the ref, so, like, they can set each, uh, set each other up, like, little jerk plays. Um, eventually, our boys start losing the lead, and things start getting worse and worse. And so Kyoshi says, "You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the inside entirely by myself because that's where like they're being the the most aggressive because it's easier to like have air quotes accidents when you're like all those bodies are pressed together." Um, and so he said, "Everyone else stay outside. I'm gonna go inside all alone." And they're like, "That's not a good idea because they're gonna just beat you up." And they kind of do just beat him up. But he's also doing really well in the inside. Um, but Hugo keeps messing up. And so... Uh, Kiyoshi's kind of carrying a little bit with what he's doing. And so he ends up taking an elbow to the face. Like, just smashed in the head. He's bleeding, I'm pretty sure. Like, kind yeah, of badly. He, he is bleeding. Um, but he gets up and he's like, nope, I'm still good. So he's he's like... Everyone else is getting pissed off at the play, and it's, like, fucking with them mentally. And Kyoshi is being both the physical and the emotional, like, uh, strong man of the team right now. Mm -hmm. And he has a speech about saying how he didn't want to... He has a speech saying about, like, he's going to be the shield that's going to defend him from stuff like this. That's the only reason that he came back, is to be, the, to be in this position, what he's doing right here. Which was cool. It was a very cool guy speech, even though uh, 
it is also extremely self <laughs> self destructive. Yes. Unbelievably, unbelievable levels of self destruction. So let me go into this by first saying um, they've maybe Kuroko has done it. They've made maybe the worst villain team in the world because I hate absolutely one of these characters. Not one of these characters has any redeeming qualities to them at all. Their designs anger inducing. Every single one of them. There's a dude here with like silver hair who chews bubble gum. The second he's on the screen for one second, you hate him. Almost every single one of these characters. I've never seen a team so widely hated <laughs> and so anger-inducing. Anger alert. There's some kind of flash flood warning. Don't worry. I'm okay. Um, and also, in design-wise, they also all kind of look like shitty dudes. It's like actually kind of amazing. Yeah, he's, he's like He looks sick. He's like super pale and his hair's all greasy. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's bad. Uh, with Hanamiya being the worst of them all, being unbelievable. Like by the end of it, I was I was actively losing it every single time he went to go say anything, and I wanted so badly for um, him to get punched in the face or some form of like street justice to be done on him. The fact that none of that happens made me so angry. Uh, he does get shown up a bunch, which is good. He loses the mental battle, but come on. Someone, someone should have beat the shit out of him at some point. Kagami went to go for it at one point, and he stops himself. Uh, he No, he doesn't even stop himself. Uh, it was um, Kuroko that stops him. Uh, he, like, trips him from underneath, uh, which is pretty good. But yeah, the, this team, my god, just an unbelievable amount of shit people inside of it. <laughs> Cannot be overstated. Um, in terms of the actual episode, I actually like the the beginning part of it when they're showing the people go in there. Uh, Almine's team is here to see the game, and they actually have Almine with them, and they show how they got him in there. First of all, they bring him in by putting him in like a, some kind of bag. Like they carry him to the game inside of a bag, and then they reveal how they got him in there. And it was like they put a um, some kind of bikini magazine down onto the floor and they trapped him inside of a box and they put him inside the um they put him inside of the uh inside of the bag and they brought him here over and then when he's like complaining to him because like you didn't even get the right idol he's like what's the difference they're both cute girls and he just says i like big tits and then that's where they leave it off on <laughs> and he goes to go uh, to go watch the game which is very funny uh, and yeah, I thought it was a good start here. Liked a lot of stuff with Tepe. I like showing that, um, Hugo's really not out of it. He's, like, too excited. And in general, the game is very tense. Because everyone is, like, so angry at the enemy team from the start. Uh, because of what happened to them last year and what they've done to Tepe and how they play in general. That it makes for a very different kind of game. And yeah, that was a good start. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it's great. I really hate this team. Um, I really like Kyoshi, so I like that he's like being defiant. Uh, I really fucking hate this team. <laughs> so, uh, I get very invested in the episodes where they play against these guys because they fucking suck. You, yeah, it's definitely a team you never want to see win in any capacity. <laughs> uh let's go on to continue the game we'll talk about episode 35 it's trust go ahead Zen. episode 35 we are still in the game with daichi obviously because mm -hmm. we just talked about it a second ago Sabrin is currently in the lead and the guy's like oh no you know i figured out the vanishing drive i know the trick and it's trick to it uh, they don't. <laughs> they do not stop it at all. <laughs> uh, Kroko gets right through, and so the offense keeps going. But then we start learning what makes um, Hanamiya in an uncrowned king, because all the uncrowned kings are, you know, like the level just below the generation of miracles. Um, and so they all have something special about them. And then um, we find out that he's extremely good at like analyzing moves and making counter strategies. And so he has uh, another guy on his team whose name is Kentaro, who uh, has like a really high IQ. So they're able to like lead each other to the perfect like mathematical point. They call it the, um, 
was it the spider's web? The spider's web, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so they are, like, constantly stealing the ball. And so they're getting to the point where the, their, like, ability to steal the ball is almost perfect. So they, like, literally can't get anything going at all on offense. Um, all of a sudden, when things are looking bleak, Kuroko uh, devises his own counter. And what he does is he intercepts his own team's passes and redirects them to other people. So basically, when the other team reads the steal and they go to make it, Kuroko gets between them and the pass that they're about to steal and redirects the ball over to someone else. Um, they finally start scoring again because of what Kuroko is doing. Um, and everyone's like, what the hell? Like, how are you even able to do that? That's super ridiculous. Uh, and Aomine is like, it's because they all trust each other that they can do that because they, they trust Kuroko to do the right thing. And so they know the ball is going to go to the right place. Um, Tepe ends up needing to come out because they're like, all right, like, dude, you're you're getting your shit rocked. Like, you need to get out of there. You're going to get hurt again. Um, and now we're kind of at the conclusion where Tepe, who's kind of been carrying up to now, um, has to go out. And then we're, we're kind of fighting back from against the spider's web, which has had them down so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then that's... Uh, it's trust. This is a very good episode because... There's a point in there where uh, Kagami is like, he hits the their stuff and he kicks it, and he's like, um, he's like super pissed about the way that they're playing, and he goes to sit down. He's like, I don't understand how you can be so calm about this, Kuroko. And then he like stops because then he actually looks at Kuroko and he's just like unbelievable levels of angry. He's like super pissed and angry about the way that the game is being played because he hates the way. He explains it a little bit more in the next episode, but he's super angry about the game and the way that it's being handled. Uh, there's a point in here where he asked straight up the Daichi dude, uh, Hanamiya, do you enjoy playing like this? And then he starts to give like a fake sob story where he says like this is the of course I hate don't like playing like this is but this is the only way that we can win with the generation of miracles and then he just starts laughing because he goes like ah that's a bunch of bullshit I actually love playing like this because it means that yeah, people I'm like just a piece of shit yeah he, he goes like actually I love playing like this because it means I get to deny people that that actually work hard for it their dreams I think it's awesome I love doing this shit he there's only he's like two seconds away from going like oh yeah this this makes me hard when i can stop a team <laughs> from <laughs> he's like it's ruined someone's life yeah it, it, it's it's it, he's like there that far it's he's like that close but then you can see that kuroko is just like what why would you play like that's so crazy um and then there's a point where almine goes to the bathroom and he sees hanamiya and he's like peeing and he goes like oh yeah and then almine is just like you're gonna lose He's like, oh yeah, tell me how we're going to lose. Just logically, tell me how we're going to lose. And he's like, I don't have any logic behind it. You're going to lose because you made Kuroko angry. And that's that's it. There's no, <laughs> you're not winning from this. <laughs> you're just going to lose. And that's just the moment of it. <clears throat> and yeah, I really like when they start showing how that's going to happen. Uh, when they get him in the spider web, it's really... Uh, it really sucks because they're stealing absolutely every single ball that they're going for. But then when they start doing... When Koriko shows up and starts, like, slapping the balls... <laughs> Sorry. I'm a child. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he starts slapping the balls right in front of his face. And he has this face of, like, what? And he starts, like, going, huh? He's, like, so flabbergasted about what's going on because he realizes that, like, am I fucking up? He's like, no. If, I, if you actually look at the way he's passing... The guy who passed it and the guy he was passing to were also surprised by the pass. That means that they don't know. And then they explain, like, yeah, he's a good, he's a smart player, but even a smart player can't predict where a ball is going if the person who shoots the ball doesn't know either. It's literally impossible for you to get this uh, through your head in any kind of capacity. And it kind of shows, like, um the style of basketball that Kuroko likes to play which is something that is all team based and trust based and actually is for the love of the game and it's going into the exact opposite way that this asshole plays which is 100% based off of just cold hard logic and just like oh yeah if you can cheat to win cheat to win it's the best way of doing it 
Um, that was really good. I like it when Tepe finally got uh, benched. Uh, because Rico, he told Rico at the beginning, if you bench me at all at this game, then I'll hate you forever. Um, and when she finally makes the decision to bench him, she says, like, I don't care if you hate me for the rest of your life. I don't want you, I don't want to see you go through what, what you did again. So you're being benched and that's the end of it. And then I think later on he says, like, I'm sorry for what I said. I shouldn't have said it. Um, cause she took it really hard and he's, she's like, it's okay. It's, it's, it's just the game. I understand where it's coming from, but um i really like that because you could see throughout the entire game she wants to bench him but she just can't but because she doesn't want him to hate her but at a certain point he's just like literally so fucked up that they can't continue the game <laughs> it's actually a detriment to have him on the team uh because if he would i think they explained it if he were actually to break that would have actually broken them down completely uh if they had seen him break uh during the game that would have been it but once he was actually benched and they were able to like kind of just carry on then they had a better chance of winning through that way so really good stuff uh really good game and this would have been another case that if we were doing this the old way this is where we would have stopped and i told zen before we started if we had done it the old way and we would have stopped on this episode i would have called an called an audible and say i'm watching the other episodes <laughs> i am not ending the game on this one <laughs> i need to see these fucking dudes lose <laughs> it's what i want more than anything else in life and me and the crunchyroll comments from 10 years ago all agree on the same thing <laughs> <laughs> and yeah really good episode how do you feel zen uh great one um the spider's web is a really cool concept i like how funky the um like special so people always ask me why uh kuroko but not like haikyuu is like my favorite sports thing mm -hmm. and my answer is always that i love the ridiculous special powers like the dragon ball z-esque abilities uh, makes the shit for me, and I think the spider's web is a really cool one, despite hating this team. Um, and then when Kuroko starts beating the spider's web, it's so fucking hype. It's such a raw moment. Yeah, the, there is a moment of like that. Yeah, it's the special moves that kind of help set it apart from a lot of other sports stuff. It's actually the same reason why I really like Ice Shield Twenty One, because a lot of their moves have like super over the top special moves, like the Hail Mary pass. They actually summon a giant Hail Mary <laughs> as they as they do it. Um, the the one of my favorites is one of the American teams has the shotgun pass, and when they shoot it, it's like a U.S. space shuttle that shoots off into the sky. <laughs> That's so good. It is very good. I can't wait till one day get to Ice Shield 21 to talk about that. But I'm with you. I'm, I'm kind of the same way where um, I think Slam Dunk is literally the only sports manga from Shonen Jump, I'll say, because I like Ishida Nojo as well. But you can it's dubious whether or not you can consider that a uh, sports uh, manga. It's more like a manga that has sports in it. That's, <laughs> that's kind of what I see it as. But anyway... Um, I really like this style of play where it's like, oh yeah, man, how how can they? It kind of like helps. Like, how do you get this all back? How does how do they go from Seiren going from winning to losing? And it's like, oh, obviously they activate the spider's web. And here you go. Here's the full breakdown. These two dudes, they have like 160 IQ plus <laughs> plays in their head, and they can perfectly guess everything. And it's like, ah, oh, damn, what are they gonna do? <laughs> when in actuality, if you ever saw this at a real a basketball game, I think I'd just be pissed. <laughs> But it works really well here in the anime, and it's also animated very well. Like, when Kuroko breaks that shit, and he just, like, fucking slaps the, the ball into the other player's hands, it's amazing. It's absolutely some of the best shit ever, um, and it's really good. Uh, man, this, this is a really good show. I think, I think that's what we can all agree on here. <laughs> so let's go on to the end of this match. Which is episode 36, because we're already so close to the end of it. Don't be ridiculous. Go ahead, Zen. Saren is still behind, unfortunately. Uh, Hyuga is all up in his thoughts, and he is not doing well. He is struggling like hell. And then they are kind of like, bro, you've got to, like, you got to get out of your head. And, you know, he, he gets really, he's really pissed at Hanamiya, basically, because uh, of what he did to Kyoshi, both games that one and this one and they tell him like he needs to to get over it and so he does and he finally starts scoring 
which is allowing them to come back because without him, they really can't make three pointers very well because Kagami's not that good at it. Um, he's like their their shooter, uh, and so when he's doing terrible, they're they're scoring less like they're scoring as much as they can, but not as many points because they can't land threes. Um, I don't know why I'm explaining basketball to people. Y'all know how basketball works. Um, I mean, not me, but thank you for the explanation. It does help <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Dubious um, claims on basketball at times. Uh, so they're they're trying to to come back, and Hanami is getting frustrated. So he tries to hit um, Kuriko with like his arm when he gets the ball. Uh, it doesn't work, but he does get some more points on the board. Time is running out, and Kuriko gets pissed off that he almost got punched, and that you know that they're. they're almost losing to the team of douches because Kuroko's big thing is about like the game should be about teamwork and friendship and having a good time and if you don't play the game because you love the game then I don't like you basically is his whole thing um he hits the ignite pass which is one of my favorite passes of his because it's so stupid where he just hard palms the he basically punches the ball um uh, and it goes flying and Kagami catches it dunks it in uh, eventually, the game is won by Huga, who, la who scores the last shot of the game. And they do, in fact, win the qualifier, so they're now officially in the Winter Cup. Um, Shutoku did as well, the Midori uh, Midorimas team. Mm -hmm. They also, in fact, did. And so it turns out that um, all the members of the Generation of Miracles and also Kuriko are in... I it, it's debatable if you count Kuroko as a part of the Generation of Miracles or not. The fandom is very split on this. Hmm. Um, really? That's interesting. But he, uh, they're, they're all in the tournament officially. And so it kind of ends with like, dun dun. So the, the battle is about to begin. Yeah, and they do like a full on like, all showing all of them at the same time. Which is really funny because they just show the one guy and he's just eating. He's the only one who's like... <laughs> The only one who would probably care he's less <laughs> would probably care less that he's actually in the Winter Cup, but they have to show up regardless because he's a part of the Generation of Miracles. Um, yeah, really good end to this. Uh, this was a... It, it, okay. This is a great arc. It, it's very hard for me to say this is a good game because it made me so angry at multiple points, but this is a good game for them to win, I'll say, because I hate the enemy team, but just something about it like making me want to watch them lose is very well done. I don't know if that counts as like a good game. It's like a different kind of enjoyment from all the other games that I've kind of had, where all the other games I was interested in like the back and forth, where this one I was just 100% focused on, like, no, I need them to win. More than anything in God, I need to see that this man loses and gets defeated, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I guess you can consider that a good game, but either way. Uh, I really like Kuroko when he's explaining when he's about to do the Ignite Pass, and he gets, when he's, like, super fucking angry, and he's like, listen, I may not agree with the Generation of Miracles, but they would never pull the shit that you were gonna do. So... <laughs> in all it gets he's in the nicest way possible he says fuck you and then he does the pass and kagami fucking scores on him and then they completely win i also like the ending montage because i don't think they show the enemy team score like one time they do score but it's just all focused on their team it's like nah nah the, the game is over it basically ended when he passed the ball right in front of his fucking face yep because this was after the dude was like he did the teardrop um shot and he was just like, ha, I had an ace in the hole. I could actually play legit the entire time. Which is maybe what made Kuriko extra pissed. <laughs> is that he's basically learning, you could actually play basketball for real and you're not doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Kuroko, his whole thing about being like righteous basketball boy is very wholesome. It is. It's it's very good. Um, uh... Yeah, I like seeing him go for that. The win there was really good because it's literally everyone cheers. Everyone goes crazy. Tears everywhere as they go, yeah. And then you remember this is not the final game and they're going to have to actually continue to move on. But it has that feeling of like, we did it. We won. It was like a, a moral victory more than anything. They beat the team that completely left them devastated last time, which was the reason why uh, they would have likely lost even if they had Tepe. But it would have probably been a different kind of experience if they actually had him with them. But either way that they hurt their teammate and everything there was a lot riding on this game that went beyond just winning and yeah i really like seeing the the 
Hanamiya just completely break down. Because I was like, clearly, if he had hit Kuroko, that, there was no way you could debate that that wasn't on purpose. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. he, like, goes for a s- straight-up, like, it's swing. a serious elbow swing. Yeah, I was like, there's no way in hell. They use a lot of, like, oh, the ref couldn't see it? If the ref didn't call it in that favor, I would have said that the ref was in on it the entire time. <laughs> That's how I would have felt on that one. Yeah, and I really like the shot of them all getting ready for the Generation of Miracle. And also Kuroko is just, like, so crazy excited that he can't, like, hold himself back. And he he just wants to keep playing basketball and keep getting better. I forgot to mention this because this is at the end of the Meet Arena game. But there's also a really good moment where uh, Meet Arena is going to go away in his cart. And he's like, I'm going to go away. And then they find number two inside of it. And he goes like, and then he's with the uh, the uh, other uh, member of Generation and um, shit. What's the name of the other big boobed girl that I'm forgetting at the moment? The uh, other big uh, Momoi. Not, um... Momoi. There, there's two oh, girls. Yeah. There's Rico who's flat, and then Momoi who is big. Momoi <laughs> who has the boobs. Yeah. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. that's how it goes. But yeah, they're they're with him there, and they're like looking at it, and Momoi is like, "Oh my god, so cute." Her, both her and the other one are just like, "Oh my god, that dog's so cute." And then uh, he looks at the dog and goes like, "Why am I so angry at this dog right now?" <laughs> like he's immediately reminded of Koroko, and he's just like, "I'm so pissed, and I can't explain why." And then when they're picking him up and they're hugging, he's like, "Oh, look at him! He's in his little jersey." He's like, "He pissed in my cart." Like, what the fuck, this dog? I hate this dog. And then it's revealed that it's Koroko's dog, and then like it all makes sense for him. I thought that was really good. I forgot to mention it last time, but it reminded me when they're talking about like post game stuff. I I remembered it right here, right now, so I wanted to talk about it. Uh. And yeah, in general, it was a really good setup for it. I also like the part where Elmine goes up to um, to leave. He's like, all right, we're done. He's like, you're not going to wait for uh, Shitoku? He's like, I already know that they're winning. So <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I already know that they're not losing, so we can move on. The only one that he was he was really interested in was uh, the Kuroko one. So yeah, Really good setup here, really good final game to get into the Winter Cup, and I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, Mr. Krabs. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, no, it's really good. The whole thing is really good. Um, it's nice to see our boys in the Winter Cup. It's nice to see the douche team get blasted as they deserve to. Mm-hmm. Um, I am very excited for the Winter Cup because the first game of the Winter Cup is fucking insane yeah so we are going to talk about one more episode which is like one half of the setup for the next one because the next game starts on 38 but it's okay because we can start about the the build up to it where we learn who's going to be their next uh opponent which is going to happen in episode 37 i look forward to it go ahead zen so the gang is going up to a hot spring to like vibe and chill and kind of celebrate that they won and then it turns out that Aomine's team, the Toa Academy, is also there. And um, they won by an insane score against their most recent opponent. They won by a, a score of like more than 100 points more than they did. Um, and it's revealed there that they know the matchup for the first round of the Winter Cup. And it's going to be a rematch between Seiren and Toa, which is the team that knocked them out of the last tournament they were in. Mm-hmm. Um, Kagami is not there, and they're like, "Where? why is he not going to do the training with us? And they're like, it's, you know, it, we know it's fine, it's good. Uh, and then Rico's dad, who is very funny, I like him, except for when he gets, he gets weird sometimes, but when he's not <laughs> weird, he's very he, funny. He's a very overprotective Japanese dad in anime, if that, yes. <laughs> that explains yes. his character. Yes. Um, and he says that he's going to help them and he's going to uh, focus on like their individual like, specialties um, because he is where Rico gets that ability that she has where she can like look at somebody and, and physically tell how they are. He, he can do that too. So he's going to help like with all of their individual talents and skills. And then it said that Kagami is going back to America to train with his like, like teacher sen- sensei. that we don't know yet. But- yeah. But that... she does um, actually show up later. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that's where this ends, and it's a hell of a wait up for the next one. 
just to say what I like about this one, there I like there's like a three way uh, face off. It's like the it's like Kuroko and Kagami facing off with Almine as they talk to each other. Um, we have one between Momoi and uh, Rico, and we have one against the actual teams that are the like the other characters on the team and against them. There's like three different ways that they're all talking to each other and they all come to the same conclusion of like, no, we're we're winning this. We got it. We got it. Uh, we're all gonna win, and they all have like different ways of doing it. And it's also really funny because they all take place in like different places. Like one of them is inside of a um, what is that place called when it's like a, sa- a sauna? There you go. I was gonna say, what's that place oh, called yeah. when it's like a sauna? And I was like, that's a sauna. It's stupid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of them takes place in a sauna, and it's just a bunch of dudes. And it's really funny because again, I looked at the Crunchyroll comments, and someone said, "Where do you pull out that paper?" Because they don't, they're not waiting any clothes. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, where did he pull that? I guess he had it on his towel or something. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, the girls have a face-off, which is really funny because um, I realized this. This is the first time. I'm not sure if this was done on purpose, but I'm going to assume that it is. Uh, as someone who's watched a lot of fan service, this is the only time where uh, Rico is not intimidated by the large chest that is in front of her. And actually, when she goes to do the face-off, she's, like, right up in it. And she's like, hell no, we're going to beat him. We're going to do it. Like, unintimidated about any of the jokes. She's like, I'm here for it. We get, like, a squish-to-squish moment, which I then talked to a friend about. And he said, like, it's better looking in the anime than it is in the manga. And I looked in the manga and I was like, well, first of all, there's no leaves in the manga. But also, yeah, there's a lot of weird proportions. So that's the only um, anime and manga difference that I know for Kuroko's basketball. (laughs) For you to ask me that one. There you go. I did my own specific research on that one. And I also really like the <laughs> <laughs> the Almine meeting up with um, Kuroko and um, Kagami because there's a point where he's just talking to Kuroko first and then uh, Kagami shows up and puts his arm around him. <laughs> And Alvide's like, don't put your arm around me. <laughs> don't, don't yeah, act like, like don't, touch me. <laughs> don't touch me. What are you doing? Um, that's really good. Uh, there's a moment where he's like, uh, Almine leaves behind his cup and then Kagami picks it up and he just like squishes it right in front of him because he's a huge man. It's really good. It's like a really good face off and I'm really excited that this is the first game. I would imagine that th- for the most part, this would be the last game. Uh, of the Winter Cup, so I'm kind of excited to see it firsthand and kind of ex- uh, excited to see how it goes. Because, yeah, based off of the way they say it, they, they say specifically, like, yo, don't think that you're going to be going against the same team that we were last time. We have still been training even more, and we're even better now. Uh, and it's amazing to see them, like, not be frightened about that at all and kind of just be like, yeah, we're going to go. And in terms of non-story uh, related things, I also really liked a lot of the hot spring stuff. There's a lot of like um, <laughs> moments with the dudes, which is really funny. Um, there's a part where they're talking about like how to properly wear your bath towel in the hot springs. And Hugo's like, uh, he's shaming the, the first years. He's like, don't put your towel there. A Japanese man has to cr- uh, like uh, proudly display his towel. And he, he also, when he stands up, it's also clear that he's not wearing any towel underneath. He's like completely naked. And he points to Kagami. He's like, look at Kagami. Look at the way he puts it on his back. And look at him in his swim trunks. Wait a minute. What? Where, <laughs> do you brought swim trunks to a hot springs? He's like... Yeah, I have never been to a hot spring, so, you know, I just brought swim trunks. <laughs> and he goes like, oh, foreigners. The way they don't understand the hot springs. <laughs> then- <laughs> and then he says like, okay, the juniors have to wash the a senior's back. And when he goes to wash his back, he ends up with like a scrub and completely like destroys his back. He's like, I thought this was good. He's like, no, that was bad. And then later on, he does it again. And he, he found like a new type of scrubber that was like for floors instead. He's like, no, you're so bad at this. And that's really good. Uh, there's a point in there where they try to sneak a peek at the other side because they hear there's a bunch of college girls and they immediately get shut down. But it's also really funny because they're just like on dudes with back. They're like, uh, at one point Kagami leaves and they're like, oh man, we lost our center for, we lost our center. He was our main ace in the hole that was, that was going to let us see. Um, they talk about, like, Kuroko is the same way. He's like, Kuroko, can't you use, like, your vision? He's like, that's not how it works. He's like, you, well, you can't be like us. We don't have eagle eyes. He's like, that's also not how it works. Like, you're you're going way above what you think that these abilities can be used in real life, and it just is not working out at all. 
And then later on with the dad, he brings out the uh, he brings out a gun and says, "Okay, which one of you actually peeped on my girl?" And then they all make the excuse of like, "We weren't trying to peep on her. We were trying to peep on the other ones, and we didn't even see anything, sir." <laughs> and we we are uninterested in your daughter in any kind of capacity, sir. It's okay. Um, but it's really funny that he just busted out a gun and was ready to shoot these kids. It's like, all right, listen up. <laughs> let's get let's get started on learning some basketball. But first, before anything, so really good episode. Um, really fun. Uh, just a good relaxing one, especially after the, all the like <laughs> asshole natures of the previous one. It's a good way of just like, all right, let's back up. We can have a little bit more laughs. We can have good time because the last uh, the last game did have a couple laughs in it, but it's not the same feeling when you're just like constantly pissed at the enemy team <laughs> and the way that it's being played so i thought it was a very good like breather and a good start of setup of a training arc as well because they're going to need one how do you feel zen uh it's very exciting mm -hmm. i really like the next game it's one of my favorite games in the entire series so i'm really looking forward to talk about that um this episode was mostly just kind of like set up and just kind of yeah. like we have the resolve kind of thing um but I, I know what's coming next, so I have, like, residual hype from that building up already because we're almost there. <laughs> fair, fair. You don't have to tell me much. You know, this is the part where I would say let's start looking into when the next one is, but I actually don't want to know too much. So could you please look ahead of the episodes and see which would be a good stopping point for us? <laughs> like, I'm so afraid of clicking next uh, and accident yes. accidentally me, catching a stray. Let me. Um, let me. So uh, we're starting at 38. Eight. Eight? Yeah, okay. going until likely the end of this game. Oh man, that's a, that's a long one. Um, Is it really? Yeah. So oh, hang on. The game with actually, I guess it's not that long. Okay. The game with Toho ends in episode forty-three. Episode forty-three. Okay. We'll yeah. remember that. So for next week is going to be episode thirty-eight to forty-three, and I'm also going to put it. In the Discord for a bus to remember because I don't have I still don't have access to the Twitter because I'm still making my way through the game. So <laughs> <laughs> thirty eight for thirty three, that is what's next for Kuroko. Uh, I could put it on the whiteboard. I have a whiteboard. I forgot I brought a whiteboard for work. <laughs> I could just put it up on there for Shonen Archive to remember the episode orders that we need to see. Um, anyway, yeah. So next week we're gonna be talking about uh, episodes. 38 to 43 it's also going to be a little bit uh funky because next week is also going to be valentine's day so it's actually likely that next week will actually be gintama instead of kuroko and kuroko will actually be on saturday so i'm just giving that heads up now uh just because some of the upcoming gintama episodes would fit really well for valentine's day so we're just going to take advantage of it and go for it there and unfortunately unless you just really love basketball there's nothing really valentine's related to kuroko <laughs> so yeah yeah, there's not not a lot of romance. A lot of unless you're like uh, unless you're someone who writes a lot of fanfic, in which case there's likely a lot of romance between all the very pretty men uh, that are inside of Kuroko, and I assume like one or two about the women. I can only assume though. I assume it's mostly the dudes. <laughs> uh, I can only assume that. Anyway, that's what's planned for next week. So look forward to that. Um, if you want to see some more Zen things, you can go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill. Zen, what's going on in Shonen Jump? Uh, you know, we're still doing, uh, the Tsukuna extermination arc. <laughs> it's just everyone <laughs> trying to not die. Um, mm -hmm. Kagurabachi's first volume finally released, uh, mm -hmm. and it did really well. It got to number four. Let's go. On like all, not just like on new releases, but all manga. That's not um, bad. On like the Oricon chart, it was number four overall. Um, it dipped down to twenty-seven the next day, which is still pretty good. And then it jumped back up to fourth because it got reprints. Uh, and once it got reprinted, it got bought up by a bunch of people again. Um, so it's looking like it's gonna do okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the other new series that people are really fighting for, which is Mama Yu Yu, um, got like twenty-fifth or something like that. So it's doing pretty well as well. Uh, Kagurabachi got a shout out by Kohei Horikoshi from Ooh. MHA fame, saying that it's incredible. And Mama Yu Yu got a shout out from Gege Akatami from Jutsu Kaisen fame, saying it is incredible. So people are thinking that this is going to be the um, 
the like inaugurated heirs when MHA and JJK leave because they're both probably going to end this year. Yeah, yeah. As both one slowly heading towards the end, the other one at the rate of a fireball going straight to the end. Uh-huh. <laughs> toward the end as fast as it can. Two, two completely different ideologies of how you should end a series. Meanwhile, Oda doesn't have to say anything. He's like, whatever, I'll say my goodbyes in five years. Fuck y'all, I'm still here. <laughs> Uh, that's all right. That's good to hear. That's nice to hear. Uh, I don't hear him as much. How's it going on the idea? So are leaks still happening on Wednesday? Oh yeah. So that. Oh dude, that's crazy. I missed all that. I was like, oh shit, that would have been real great to so, see leakers okay. freak out. So you know the whole like leak thing is like ones for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Well, the Japanese cops found the guy who's been leaking the book early. Because what they did, basically, was they had a storefront that would break street date and would give it to somebody early. And then that person would then take them and sell those leaks to other people. So it was like a whole mafia shit, dude. Um, So, like, the guy who would get the magazine first would be like, I'll send you the leaks if you pay me. So you pay me, I'll photograph the series that you want. And it was so, like, that's what they did. Um, well, they found the guy that was breaking street date, and they arrested him. Um, wow. So he, his ass is going to jail. Um, so the, the the leaks are probably still happening, but just later on because they can't get street date breaks um, anymore. Yeah, I would imagine it's probably happening closer to like Sunday now. Not actually Sunday, but closer to well. Sat- the, the leakers are saying it would be tonight. It would be like the following day. I guess they have another source. I don't know. I don't know why you would want to try to be the next source after the last guy got arrested. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't know. I would kind of stop. I would stop. I would, I would that stop. As, as under, thank you. Yeah, um, I would personally be like, nah, I'm good. I didn't know that this manga shit was that real. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna just stop. That's crazy. So we'll see. Well, ongoing leak drama. That was the one thing where I was like sad. I was off from Twitter because my brother, I think, told me just offhandedly. He's like, "Did you know that they're doing this?" It might not have been my brother. It might have been a friend of mine. I was, like, I was like, "I assume you heard about this." I'm like, "No, I didn't hear about this." And they're like, "Here he goes this." I was like, "What? That's fucking crazy!" And then another friend on another Discord started talking about, it, and he's like, "Rip, I can't read it on Wednesdays." And then I said, "Oh my god, thank God! Maybe this means I'll finally have to stop fucking worrying about my series every fucking Wednesday for it to be randomly ruined on a Wednesday." <laughs> but we'll see. I, I doubt that this was actually stopping any leakers. I assumed that it would just be later, but it would be kind of insane to be like, no, we're still breaking street date. It's like, did you not see what happened to the last guy? Be a little bit smarter about this. That's crazy. Uh, well, good luck with all that. That should be fun to deal with for the upcoming weeks. Uh, as for me, still doing for Go stuff. I released a video about talking about trying to go for NP5. Uh, you know, it was a lot of me going, I don't know, man, I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> I have a plan. This sounds like a bad plan. It's the only plan I got. Uh, wish me luck. So, so unbelievably terrified, um, going into it. And besides that, I'll probably still be uploading a bunch of other stuff. We did a stream on Monday for Final Fantasy 14 that I have to probably remember to put up there at some point. Um... As I make my way through that, continue. I continue to play through Like a Dragon. I feel like I'm getting somewhere close to the end of it. And not and then I remember there's an entire other like story li- I think I have to do. <laughs> there's a point where the protagonist it goes from one protagonist into two protagonists. And I still I'm like seven chapters in and I have not hit the part where you unlock the second protagonist. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, I'm like, uh, the current hour count is at um, 44 hours in, (laughs) 7 hours in, and there's an entire encyclopedia dedicated to the Duju fight, and there's one that says Hawaii, and the other one that says Japan, and the one for Japan is like completely, like three dudes in it, and that's it, so it's like, holy shit, I don't know... I don't know when I'm finishing this game. Again, a friend of mine who beat the game doing whatever, he said it took him 80 hours. So I don't know if I'm 40 hours away from beating the game 
or it's like 40 hours unless I specifically just mainline the story and then save it the rest for New Game Plus or something. I don't know. Um, but it's a lot of video game. <laughs> it is a lot of video game uh, to play through, that's for sure. Um, especially because there was a part where I unlocked a Animal Crossing-like feature. And I was playing that, and I was like, wasn't there a main story I was supposed to do? And then I went into a dolphin, and the dolphin took me back to the main story. And I was like, I don't think I had to be there for that long. But I also made, like, uh, $50,000 from that, so I needed to actually go do that, so it's fine. Because uh, everything in that game is unbelievably expensive. Once you get to the higher end of the the equipments that you need to make, it's like, oh yeah, you need about, like, a, a million dollars if you want to make the best bat in the game. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I'm ever gonna make it that far. It reminds me of the the last um, like a dragon game I played with, which was Ishin, where I dedicated three days to chicken farming, uh, chicken race betting, where I did nothing but bet on chicken races until I had so much Rio that I could afford every single end game item. Uh, not every end every end game. Excuse me, I could afford the ability to craft end game items i still did not have <laughs> enough money to afford the highest tier but i was able to get a really good gun and sword and finish the game but i was that's like insane yeah like a dragon games are no joke that's why i never 100 percent them because it requires so much of your time and effort to actually do it that it's uh insane it's a lot of rng as well and it's a lot of also like playing mini games like Mahjong and shit and actually being good at it. So I make my way through that. Of course, none of that is recorded because if I was recording that, I don't think anyone would be able to handle it for the long periods of time. But I remember to occasionally release other stuff on the channel. <laughs> don't worry about it. And yeah, that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone, for Kuroko's Basketball. Thank you very much for joining us. We will be back next week to talk more about it. We are getting pretty close to... We're not getting pretty close, but we're getting... Yeah, actually, because the series ends at episode 75, and then I think it actually ends with movies. Is, am I correct on that? Kuroko? Yeah. Yeah, the, there's um, like a, a finale that is a movie that's a year later got you okay so it's extremely hype by the way do you know the premise of that movie i'm gonna assume it's like i'm this is just basing it off of it you can tell me if i'm right about this don't tell me any further details than that but i'm gonna assume it's everyone of the best players that we've met so far on the japan side going against an american team correct boom <laughs> that's the ending of every sports <laughs> manga yeah you want to know how uh, i shield 21 goes <laughs> at the end <laughs> uh, i mean you just gotta have an all-star game it's an it's an excuse to do an all-star game i would 100 percent expect it to be like and the, it's really funny that it's always america because they're like oh yeah america that's the true that's where all the OP people live. <laughs> That's where the, the crazy dudes at basketball go. <laughs> in sports, which is really funny. But yeah, uh, I can't wait to see that. Because I would definitely love to see how all of them would function in a team. And see how insane an American team would actually have to look to not just instantly lose to <laughs> a team that is actually just the current iterations of all the generation of Miracles and Kagami and Kuroko. Um, it'd be kind of insane. Um, that's how I felt with Ice Shield 21, actually, when they combined all... Because there's, like, uh, 16-year-olds who are, like, 7 feet tall in Ice Shield 21. So I was like, how the fuck are... Like, you put all the best dudes on Japan. How am I supposed to expect them to, like, lose? And then the American teams are like, what if all of our characters just started at, like, 8 feet tall? Because they're Americans. And they're like, okay, I guess that's one way of doing it. <laughs> that's one way of uh, addressing the situation. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. But that's the end of Shark Kai of everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back next week. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.